Yeah. I'm going to hit record so I don't forget. So I don't forget to, to record, but we'll edit this part. Okay. So we're facing a tsunami of change. Change is increasing at an exponential rate. Some scientists estimate that in this century, we could experience the equivalent of 20,000 years worth of change. And we've got a 500 million year old brain that doesn't like change. So that's going to create that resistance we have to change is going to create increasing levels of drama, chaos, and conflict. <clears throat> and the, the only chance, the, the thing that we need to be doing to be able to navigate our way through the anxiety that change and innovation creates in us is to develop our emotional intelligence. So that's, that's what I've been doing for the last 21 years, helping uh, individuals and organizations get better results by developing their emotional intelligence. Got it. Okay. Well, that's, I'm, I'm excited about the conversation, Phil. Cool. Um, what we, I'll tell you what we focus on, and maybe you can tell me anything that may help uh, with the questionnaire, the questions and areas. So we're definitely talking about emotional intelligence and the value of, so that's going to be perfect. Um, we are focused, well, so we've done uh, 200 podcast episodes, commercial real estate, commercial real estate investing. We're moving to season three on literally how to build wealth like the 1%, regardless of its commercial real estate investments or other. Mm -hmm. So a lot of mindset, a lot of um, how to think and act and uh, invest like the, you know, the wealthy, right? So a lot of people have problems even you know, being in the mindset, like kind of what we were talking about, uh, taking risk and realizing that if they don't put something uh, as an investment, then they're going to be working till their end. And people are worried about, you know, losing money or it's, man, it's the other way around, <laughs> the other way around, right? So any advice or insight or anything you think you can give around, you know, uh, the mindset that it takes to be an investor would be amazing. Uh, so any, any kind of line of questions that you think I should ask that will help, uh, help me on this, in, uh, interview journey right now? Uh, yeah. Why is, uh, why is betting on yourself by developing your emotional intelligence, the best investments you can ever make? Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. And can you give us an example of a company that's doing just that? Okay. Why is betting on yourself the best investment? Betting on yourself for emotional intelligence, the best bet why for is, your investment. Why is betting on yourself to develop your emotional intelligence the best possible investment you can make for a career personal and corporate success how does how does the development of emotional intelligence guarantee success yeah yeah okay i love it i'm a minute let me write a couple of these down why is emotional intelligence going to become a multi-trillion dollar industry All right. Well, my friend, is there uh, uh, anything, questions for me before we kind of get started? No. Well, Ed, Phil, where are you located? Toronto, Ontario, Toronto. Canada. Okay, very good. Uh, I've never been to Ontario. I've been to Canada a couple of times, been to Niagara Falls. Uh, it's um, just a, it's in Toronto, an hour away from Niagara Falls. Okay. Yeah, I I just know the just that area I think is the only place I've actually been in Canada. Yeah, have, you, have you been to um um uh, God, Niagara Falls, um beautiful area. There's a little there's a little town there. Niagara on the lake. Okay. Yeah. yeah now, we went to uh went to Niagara Falls, we went to the little city uh there, I guess which whatever Niagara on the lake. Niagara on the lake. Okay. And then uh, 
enjoy dinner at some, you know, nice buildings up there, skyscraper that overlooked Niagara Falls at night. It was amazing. Uh, okay. I don't know so if you've heard of Cutco Knives, but that's where their their office is in uh, uh, Olean, New York. And I, we went to the there and then we crossed the border when we were younger. And oh, so cool. just if you went an, if you went another 15 minutes, you'd hit a very quaint um town called Niagara on the lake and there's a fort there called fort george yeah uh, where there was a lot of uh there's a lot of a lot of history there got it got it and you uh lived there your whole life i've lived in uh the toronto area my whole life yeah my whole and then my just whole traveled like a uh, go ahead sorry 68 years <laughs> and it looks like you're the world traveler well i um yeah, I, I one point in my career, I was traveling about sixty thousand miles a year uh, throughout North America and the Pacific Rim, but that was when I was a a semiconductor. I was in the semiconductor industry for twenty years. Uh, I left that industry as an executive. Um, I, I founded, uh, so I, I did a lot of traveling in that industry. Um, but all of my coaching, I do now. So I've been I've been an executive coach for the last 21 years, um, and I think for the first 10 years I was traveling everywhere. Uh, that's before um, Zoom and all of that. So now I do all of my coaching all over the world. Uh, I continue to do that, but I do it via Zoom or Skype. So I yeah. do it remotely. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Uh, maybe you can give us too, as we ask, uh, I, I'll probably ask a few questions about some of your clients, not them specifically, but where some of your clients work at and some of the, uh, the obstacles that you've led them through and some of the successes they've had, et cetera. You can give me some of those sure. nuggets sure. that may help. Sure. Okay. Um, okay. Well, Phil, I, I usually record about 20, 30 minutes, maybe. So uh, somewhere in there, probably start with you, your background in your own words, you know, who you are and, and uh, your experiences and what you've been doing. Uh, the author of what, how many books? And maybe you can give me a title or two. I don't know, six or eight. Um, this is one of them called The Servant Warrior Leader. Uh, the rest of them, I'll just give you the link. They're all on, uh, they're on Amazon. Let me just. Uh, let I'll, me just uh, the I'll links, give, you can okay, email them the to me. I'll give you the page right now. I've got it right here. Okay. Um, bear with me. Which one do you like to hit the most? Your current one, the servant warrior, servant leader warrior? Hang on. Let me uh, let me send this to you first, and then I'll, I'll, I'll respond to your question with something you may not. Um, yes, sir. It may surprise you. So there's the link. Do you see it there in the chat box? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I wouldn't recommend any of them <laughs> uh, because uh, I've uh, I have my own podcast. We've got over 200 episodes. Yes, and, sir. And um, those books I wrote for me. Um, I've got a newsletter on LinkedIn. I've got over 5,000 subscribers and oh, 32,000 followers. Um, but I wrote those books primarily for me, so I wouldn't recommend any of them. The one book I would recommend is Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth. Um, I think he's, he's incredible, um, and I would strongly recommend uh, that book. All right. So I'd love, I'd love to hear the recommendation. Okay, well, so let's put that uh, on air. I think we'll get get ready to get started. Yeah, we'll just jump into have a great conversation, normal oh, conversation. Just, and just to just let you know, I, I have a, I have a, I have to jump off uh, at three o'clock. That's my time. That's right. I think we'll we'll probably be no more than thirty minutes. Hopefully, I'll give you ten minutes, uh, maybe five to ten minutes uh, in between your meeting, the top well, of the hour. Thank you. Yes, sir. Let's see if we can go here. Okay, we're already recording, we're already ready to go. Okay. 
All right. Hello, hello. This is Abel Pacheco, your host for the Five Talents podcast, where we talk about how to build wealth like the 1%. So we're super excited today to have Mr. Phil Johnson uh, on our show. He is one of those tremendous individuals that just has so much time, effort, and energy. Uh, a lot of his cycles today on emotional intelligence and man, published author six to eight times over. Um, has been an executive coach for 21 plus years, world traveler, is amazing individual. Uh, I don't want to take anything away from his, uh, from his introduction, but, but we're super excited that he's here. So Phil, just want to say thank you, first of all, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Oh, Abel, it's uh, my pleasure. It's, a, it's an honor to be on your show. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for just, you know, for carving out the time for us. So in your own words, maybe we can start here. Uh, I know I cut this introduction short because you've done some tremendous, amazing things over the past, you know, years of your life and the last, you know, la latest 20 year run uh, as a, uh, an executive coach and really focusing on emotional intelligence. Let me turn it over to you in your own words. Please tell us uh, who you are and what you do. And we'll just start a great conversation here. Uh, yeah, I am. Um... I, I am an executive coach, uh, I guess that's a, that's a title, but I, um, I really help individuals and organizations get better results um, by developing their emotional intelligence. So I'm kind of like a, uh, I'm a, like a Sherpa taking people on the journey um, to develop their emotional intelligence. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. So uh if you if you haven't really you know read up or know this subject, you're you're in for a treat because there is IQ and there is EQ. Uh, someone can be very very intelligent, book smarts, uh, data points, metrics analysis, numbers, however you want to look at it, um, and very you know highly skilled in one area. That's high Q, IQ, EQ, emotional. Uh, really, the intelligence part of it is is you know really the part that I'm so fascinated and so excited that Phil's here. So Phil, let's start here. What is emotional intelligence? Very simply, a very simple way to, to understand emotional intelligence is it's the ability to feel the fear and anxiety that change creates in us and move through it towards what we're trying to achieve, as opposed to allowing that, that fear to to keep us trapped in our comfort zones. Got it. Yeah, that fear and anxiety. Uh, if if you're an investor and you're on our show right now, anytime you have a big deal, a new investment, a good you know a good amount of money in your pocket, and you're trying to figure out where do I deploy it next, uh, you know that fear, that anxiety, that worry, that doubt, uh, that a lot of times you know will prevent someone from moving forward either on the on the right thing or potentially cause a hasty decision on the, on the wrong thing. You know? So I think either one of those scales, uh, this is exactly why I wanted to feel, you know, on the show. So yeah, that makes sense. You, you can, you understand it, what to do and what to process it. So as we know what emotional intelligence is, you know, t tell us a little bit about, you know, how, how you came across this particular area of expertise why did you choose emotional intelligence? And, you know, maybe we can start here. Well, that's a great question. Um, I don't know whether I chose it so much, but I've been on this path for the last 54 years. Um, long before the term emotional intelligence was ever coined. Uh, I'm 68, but I was born with dyslexia. And, uh, because my brain doesn't work the way most people's brains work, it forced me to do a lot of what I now refer to as emotional labor. And um, that, that's helped me, that's helped, that's given me a perspective on, on myself and other people that helps me to help them to achieve better results. Think of it as, think of it like a blind person that develops great hearing as a compensation. Um, I started working on what's now referred to as emotional intelligence at a very early age as a as a compensation for my dyslexia. 
Got it. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. So that it, it uh, kind of came, uh, it sounds very organic, uh, Phil, that's number one. Uh, like you said, it was almost forced upon you. And then, man, that, that led you to, you know, doing what you're doing now, huh? Helping others. Yep. So, it, um, yeah, go ahead. It, it had a major impact in uh, the success I've had in my life, in my, my career, um, both in, within corporations and, and in my own business. <laughs> um, yeah. And if, and to be, be quite honest with you, I, um, if I hadn't had the good fortune of being born with dyslexia, by the way, back in those days, there was no such thing as dyslexia or mm -hmm. ADD or ADHD. I was mm -hmm. just labeled a slow learner. But looking back on and I didn't realize I had had the condition until about 35 years ago. But if I hadn't been born with dyslexia, I would not very likely have been willing to do the, the emotional labor that the development of emotional intelligence requires. Yeah. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Uh, yeah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. The, these things weren't uh, quite uh, put into a, a, a disorder or a, a, I don't even know the words for it. There was no label for it back then. Like you said to like today, okay. Doctor says, Oh yeah. Dyslexia. This is what happens. And, you know, in your, in your mind versus someone else's and like, oh yeah, okay. We know it today. That's a hardship that somebody has to, to work through that. So that emotional labor is what you had to figure out on your, on your own through that. So just maybe you can describe that a little bit and how it, it uh, works into to what you do today. Well, um, there are three signals. Think of emotional labor. Think of the development of emotional intelligence as going to the dentist. Nobody would ever go to a dentist unless they were either in pain or trying to avoid pain. And I guarantee you. Okay, yeah. yeah. Nobody, nobody would develop their emotional intelligence unless they had an urgent desire for better results. See, there's only... There's only two sources of motivation that will that will cause us to leave our comfort zone. One is pain, the other one is passion. And hardly anybody's connected with their passion. So for the most part, the the executives and organizations I work with, their primary motivation for working with me is pain. They have an urgent desire for better results than they're currently getting and they need help to achieve those results. So that's where the journey begins. Um, now, I've also made the statement that emotional intelligence is going to become, the development of emotional intelligence is going to become a multi-trillion dollar industry. And the reason for that is because we're facing a tsunami of change. Change is increasing at an exponential rate. Some scientists estimate that in this century, we could experience roughly the equivalent of 20,000 years worth of change. And we've got a 500 million year old brain that doesn't like change. So let me give you an example. So there's a part of our brain called the amygdala that for the last 500 million years has been trying to keep us safe and alive by making sure we never leave our cave, we never leave our comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. And if we do, it automatically secretes a hormone into our bloodstream called cortisol, and that causes the executive center of our brain, our prefrontal cortex, to shut off, and we go into what psychologists refer to as an amygdala hijack. We go into fight, flight, or freeze mode. Some people run away. Some people freeze like a deer in the headlights. Uh, some people lash out. So when that happens, in conflict situations, it can cause people to die. It can create that drama and chaos. In business or personal situations, um, relationships die. We burn trust. So as an analogy, if you think of your amygdala as a very frightened four-year-old child, 
the development of our emotional intelligence acts like a big brother or a big sister to quiet the amygdala response down and better enable us to feel the fear and anxiety that change always creates in us and move through it towards our desired result as opposed to allowing that anxiety to trap us in our comfort zone. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And as I'm listening to you, I've heard this more than, you know, more than a few times, right? Exactly what you're talking about, maybe said in different words and in different contexts, but ultimately it's the same. It's you, you've got some things wired in our brain from my layman understanding. We've got some things wired in our brain. That's like, Hey, a caveman, I think is a great analogy. Well, back, back then, before we were thinking about money or investment or anything like that, I was just like, don't die. And my brain is wired for, Hey, there's, there's something that could kill me. I better, you know, figure out how to work through it. And in, in my today's modern, you know, life there, there is no, you know, big saber tooth tiger that I have to worry about, you know, killing today or coming out of the cave, but man, I could lose my job. I could, you know, uh, un uncertain how to invest the right dollar amount or where my, you know, my income is going to come from next year, something's going to happen. So that flight or fight uh, or freeze, you know, either one of those is, is something that we're facing today, no matter what. So man, in, in, in this mindset, maybe you could help us for the investors that are, that are listening right now, they've got to figure out, you know, what to do next, how to do it. Uh, they're facing, you know, turmoil with interest rates, the economy, what's going to happen. How can you give them some, you know, some insider advice of what you just said, just kind of related to that investor mind. How do, how do they work through all those emotions? Um, they develop the development of our emotional intelligence enables us to become more present and stop worrying. Worrying has no value. Worrying mm. is practicing fear in advance. So it's a complete waste of our energy to worry. Um, so by developing your emotional intelligence, it enables you to, to look at situations more objectively without fear, without worry. And that helps you to turn those challenges into opportunities for better results. See, when you're consumed by fear, you're no longer conscious. You're in reactive mode. Um, you're no longer looking to be creative. You're no longer looking for the opportunities that the challenges may create. You're in survival mode. So, the development of your emotional intelligence enables you to look at the challenges as opportunities for better results, which they are. And without the emotional intelligence, you miss those opportunities because you're consumed with fear and worry. Yes. Let me give you an example of... Uh, of a company that's currently doing over a trillion dollars a year in annual revenue. Please. And their primary focus in hiring is the search for people with above average levels of emotional intelligence. And when I tell you who the company is, you'll recognize it and you'll start to recognize the kind of environment that their people have created. And that company is Apple. When you walk into an Apple store, that energy you feel is an example of a more emotionally intelligent environment. They're not trying to sell you anything. They want you to have a great experience. They want to understand your pain. And if possible, offer a solution. Or whether you buy anything or not is secondary to their desire to want to serve you. They want you to have a great experience. Maybe you'll go tell your friends and they'll tell their friends. So when you reflect on the energy in that environment, 
that energy is very different from the energy of the of the of the companies surrounding that those stores. So that by developing your emotional intelligence, you're able to create a level of trust uh, that leads to far greater results. If Apple wanted to get into banking and they know nothing about banking, they'd probably have over 10 million depositors overnight because of the level of trust that their people have created. They know that even though Apple doesn't know anything about banking, if they decide to get into it, they'll figure it out and they'll do very well at it. So, so that's an example of the value and importance of developing emotional intelligence, especially during the time we live in of rapidly accelerating change. See, we're all, because of our biology primarily, we're all experiencing low-grade amygdala hijacks every day. Um, and the development of our emotional intelligence is the solution that will enable us to turn the challenges we face into opportunities for better results. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So I, uh, I, you know, on this part, it's for me personally, I'm kind of thinking about everything you're saying. I'm, tr I'm trying to be as quiet as possible and listen. My mind's still going and thinking about, you know, Oh, the next question, what do I ask Phil and this and that in, in, on this side of it. But really I, I stopped to think about exactly what you just said. There are so many forces that are saying, you know, uh, keeping me distracted, keeping me about a worry, thinking about something that has no, uh, you know, there's no control within it today, right now. And then I start to worry and think about it in my own mind. And I'm like, oh, it's like our last investment that we made. We're, we, we buy commercial real estate, we buy apartment complexes, we raise millions of dollars for deals. Um, one of the last deals was, you know, five, six million bucks. We have it you know, at, at quote unquote risk. And as you're going into this deal, there are so many things that we're thinking about in terms of, well, what happens if it goes wrong? Well, what happens if we lose somebody's money? Well, what happens if, you know, our due diligence goes wrong? What, I mean, all these things and the way you said it, uh, worrying has no value. You're practicing fear in advance. And that's exactly, you know, the, the enemy of like critical thinking. I need to be able to critically think about what's going on uh, be able to look at some data metrics and you know analyze the the best possible scenario, not worrying or or having fear uh, in advance of it. So that obstacle that they're going to come if if anybody's in you know in in our shoes, uh, you kind of know this. We're you know under due diligence. Uh, you have something under contract. You have some hard earned money, and maybe you're just an investor in you know looking to place your next million dollars. In either case. There are obstacles that will come up in the moment before you have to make that decision. That's an opportunity. What, what I'm hearing from you, Phil, right? It's like, well, let's look at it objectively. Let's put my fear, my emotional part of it down for a second. And let's just look at it, you know, face value. This is an obstacle. It will stop other people from moving forward. If I figure out how to win or, uh, you know, effectively maneuver around this obstacle, I can be the winner when somebody else may stop there. Uh, so th that's kind of how I sum it up for me, at least the simpleton. How would you say that that was, was that, you know, kind of. People, you're, you're exactly right. Um, <laughs> okay, let, yeah. me, let me give you another phrase to write down. Please. <clears throat> Developing your emotional intelligence will enable you to out care your competition. Developing your emotional intelligence will enable you to outcare your competition. It will enable you to develop deeper, more trusted advisor relationships, which will translate into better results that require less effort, and you'll have more fun in the process. Mm, got it. Yeah. 
See, when you lo when you develop your emotional intelligence, you radiate trustability. When you lack emotional intelligence, you radiate fear and untrustability. So there's, there's something called, you may have heard of this, there's something called the trust economy that's actually growing much faster than the traditional economy. Uh, it's currently estimated at over $10 trillion a year. And that what it is simply is that because of the accelerating rate of change, people can't keep up. So they're relying more and more on the people they trust, their network of trusted advisors to make decisions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if your walls are up, if you lack emotional intelligence, if you're real, if you're being ruled by your fear, you're radiating untrustability. Yeah. Which is going to make the, your ability to develop trusting relationships that much harder. Yeah. The reality is that your network of trusted advisors is the most valuable asset you have as an individual or as an organization. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I agree uh, 100%. And, you know, you, you bring some good points for other people that are trying to, you know, figure out how to invest or how to build wealth, you know, like the 1%, because, uh, when I graduated, I'll say this from doing investments on my own with me and my wife, rather us together, when we started doing, uh, bigger deals, bigger investments, investing into multi-million dollar projects versus hundreds of thousands of dollars, we, we quickly realized there's no way we can get this done without the right team, the network of people. And as we, met other people that were having success in this area, uh, we had to build some of that trust. And if we're, you know, at the beginning, now that I think about it versus today, we have much different network connections, must, much different team members, uh, higher level, uh, higher net worth, higher liquidity, higher experience. Uh, they're in a different, they play a different game when it comes to investing versus somebody trying to make a million versus someone who already has 50 or 100 million, and they're trying to preserve and grow it. And so in that perspective, you know, we, I, I've got to build deeper relationships, more meaningful ones. And I'm, I need to, you know, if I do that, there's that trust factor, which allows somebody to say, you know what, we should work together. I like you. You like me. The only way you can do that is by, the, is by investing in the development of your emotional intelligence. That's why betting on yourself by developing your emotional intelligence is the strategically best thing you can possibly do to position yourself for success in every area of your life. Let me, uh, let me just you tell you this. what I... You, yeah, you mentioned, well, sorry, you mentioned this earlier in our kind of pre-conversation and, and I was like, man, that makes a lot of sense. What, I mean, why is betting... Um, on yourself for emotional intelligence, one of the best possible investments of, of my time, resources, energy. Why, why is that? Because of this, because of the tsunami of change we're facing. See, we're only conscious about three to 5% of the time. Let that sink in a little bit. <laughs> oh, we're only conscious. We're only actually conscious about 3 to 5% of the time. The rest of the time, we're relying on our unconscious habits to generate our behavior and our results. So what really that means is that in a lot of respects, we're still behaving like Neanderthals, bouncing off of each other. And in order to develop higher levels of conscious, better results, 
you have to raise your level of consciousness. You cannot get better results than your current level of consciousness. It is impossible. So whatever results you're getting in your life, in your business, in your personal life, is a reflection of your current level of consciousness about what's going on in you and around you. In order to get better results, you have to raise your level of consciousness, which comes about as a result of developing your emotional intelligence. And without getting too far into this to freak out your listeners, um, <laughs> there's, an, there's an underlying energy physics to what I'm saying that I've been proving over the last 21 years all over the world that makes the results of developing your emotional intelligence as predictable and quantifiable as any physical science. So again, I want to stress that the development of your emotional intelligence is the best thing you can do to ensure your success. And as the rate of, as the rate of change continues to accelerate exponentially, what I'm saying to you today is going to get proven over and over and over and over again. Emotional intelligence isn't a solution to the challenges we face. It is the only solution to the challenges we face. And the sooner people start to bet on themselves by developing their emotional intelligence, the better the results you're going to get. Yeah. It's, it's fun. But I'll tell you, it's awfully hard work. And I, I, I want to be open and honest about that. It's like Navy SEAL training for emotions. Um, yeah. There's significant both biological and sociological resistance we have to change. And you can't develop your emotional intelligence by having a conversation like the one we're having here mm -hmm. or by reading a book mm -hmm. um, or by watching a video. The development of emotional intelligence is not an intellectual process. It is an experiential process. So let me give you a numerical example of the difference between intellectual intelligence and emotional intelligence. Think of intellectual, by the way, this is where our educational system and our employment system has failed us dramatically. They have completely failed to prepare us for the tsunami of change we're facing. But think of intellectual intelligence as getting $10,000 a day for 31 days. So at the end of 31 days, you've got $310,000. Now think of emotional intelligence as getting a penny that doubles in value every day. At the end of 31 days, you've got $10.7 million. At the end of 40 days, you've got over $5 billion. At the end of 50 days, you've got over $5 trillion. So the point is, it doesn't take any more effort to go from day 30 to day 31 than it did to go from day one to day two. But it's a journey. It's, a, it's an awareness-building process. It's a consciousness-building process. And the ROI never ends. It keeps increasing exponentially. You see, intellectual intelligence is largely genetic. Our ability to do intellectual labor is inherited. If you have a 160 IQ, your parents had a high IQ, their parents had a high IQ, and you inherited it. So not everybody can have a high IQ, but anybody can develop their emotional intelligence. Anybody. And the ROI developing that intelligence is massive. It's yeah. remarkable. Yeah. Well, um, real quick on this, Phil. So something I probably should have mentioned, but if you're still listening now towards the end of our show, uh, you'll know this and uh, maybe cause you a little pause and rewind on the show to some of the nuggets that Phil 
uh, is dropping because he's actually had career revenue of $1.5 billion. So uh, let me say that again, career revenue of $1.5 billion. So uh, I know there's some people that would hear this show and they go, ah, I'm just need to get to work. Forget about emotional intelligence. I, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to call more people or make more, you know, deals happen or try to get a bigger percentage. You know, this is kind of foofy and yada, yada, yada. For those that, you know, just quite don't, you know, believe in it, re- hit, I'm going to hit push pause, hit rewind, uh, do some research on your own time. Uh, we don't want to sell you on that part of it. You know, it's not worth the time. But for the people that get it, they're like, okay, I'm in. I understand. Can you give them an exercise or an activity or something that would help them become a better investor today? I can, I'm leaving the show. I'm like, you know what? Everything they said makes sense. I have this next deal on my plate. It's $50 million. What's an activity or some kind of, you know, action item they can take today to say, you know what, let me, let me settle myself down, take the fear and the worry and emotion out of it. And, and, you know, start to, to make some, here's a real, here's a really easy one. Okay. Guaranteed to work. No, that's perfect. A lot of fact, it's been working for tens of thousands of years. There you go. Um, focus on your breathing. I want you to close your eyes right now. And I want you to take five slow, deep breaths. I want you to breathe in slowly through your nose and blow it out slowly through your mouth. And I want you to focus on that. And I want you to do it five times. Breathe in slowly through your nose and blow it out slowly through your mouth. See, when you're focusing on your breathing, it's impossible to feel anxiety. It's impossible to think when you're focusing on your breathing. See, what's actually happening is a part of our brain called the amygdala that never wants us to be in the present moment. It, it wants us to always be focused on some potentially better future moment or some past moment, but it never wants us to be in the present moment. So here's a little nugget. The person most present in this moment is most influential. The person most present in the moment is most influential. So by focusing on your breathing, that will take you out of your anxiety and bring you into the present moment. And that will give you the greatest opportunity for success in this moment. Works all the time. See, most people are thinking about they want to they want to get through the present moment to get to some potential better future moment there is no future moment there will never be a future moment when it gets here it'll just simply be the present moment all there will ever be is the present moment and most people are very hardly conscious in the present moment because they're focused on some potentially better future moment or some past moment, but they're not in the present moment. So they're robbing themselves of the ability to be creative and to look for the opportunity in the present moment. The person most present in the moment is the most influential. All we're ever going to have are present moments. Don't live in the future. It'll, it'll never come. There is no Let's future. The best decision we can make today for our, for our investing journey. I'm with it. Yep. So that's, see, our ego wants us to be, our ego wants to feel le- us to feel less than or greater than, but it never wants us to feel equal to. So it's, it's robbing us 
of the energy we need to make better choices by trying to pull us out of the present moment. Yeah. So this simple exercise of focusing on your breathing stops you from thinking, stops you from creating the anxiety that blinds you to the reality of the present moment. Yes, sir. All right, Phil, thank you so much. I, I, re I sincerely appreciate the moment. Uh, thank you, brother. It's like I, I got to get a little a moment of, of bringing myself back to the present right now. I mean, I literally, I'm like, okay, great. I feel like I can attack the day in a different mentality. I'm going to take a few more minutes. Um, I know you have to go. So let me, let me do this first. If somebody is going to reach out to you, wants to, you know, get in your world, get some coaching, read one of the six to eight books that are out there on Amazon, uh, consume some of, you know, the, the servant warrior leader. And they looked at your last book and they're like, Oh man, I need to connect with Phil. I need, you know, I need to hire him as a coach. I need to get in his world one or the other. What's the best place to go to, to do so. And who, who do you want to reach out to you and how, how should they? I'm going to give you right this very second, um, a link to my, uh, my zoom calendar and anybody can jump on that calendar and I'd be happy to, uh, to chat with them. Um, and you can see if uh, you can, we will say it out loud too, so we can capture it on the, on the audio and then we'll put it in the show notes as well, Phil. Yeah, it's um, well, it's, it's Calendly. Calendly you, you can see it there in the show notes. Yeah. Calendly.com forward slash MBL, uh, MBL coach forward slash chat dash with dash Phil. We'll put this in the show notes, but I just want to make sure to say it out loud too. Sure. Um, and who do you want to reach out to you, Phil? Anybody that has an urgent desire for better results than they're currently getting. If they're motivated to get better results than they're currently getting, I can help them do that. All right. That's awesome. Well, Phil, I, I sincerely appreciate your time. I now looking back on, on our few moments, I was like, oh, there's so many other questions uh, that came to mind, Phil, but we'll have to wait till another time and uh, want to be respectful of yours, brother. I just appreciate it so much. And uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I think you're going to make some, you're, you're going to make a few people a few more million dollars uh, literally just with a few nuggets that you've, that you've had here at least across the way. So thank you very much for your time. Hey, well, it's a pleasure. And thank you for the work you're doing. All right, brother. Thank you very much. I appreciate it and have a good day. Uh, and everyone else, look forward to see you on the next show. Talk to you soon.